Faith turns the night into the day. Love drives the doubts and fears away. And my heart is singing with the joy bells ringing. List to the feeling of the chimes. Faith wins the victory every time. Hallelujah, what a savior. And just know that he is mine. Faith turns the night into the day. Love drives the doubts and fears away. And my heart is singing with the joy bells ringing. List to the beating of the chimes. Faith wins the victory every time. Hallelujah, what a Savior, and just know that He is mine. Faith turns the night into the day. Love drives the doubts and fears away. And my heart is singing with the joy bells ringing. Listen to the feeling of the chimes. Faith wins the victory every time. Hallelujah, what a Savior, and just to know that He is mine, and just to know that He is mine.
in God for the answer of faith in God. Whisper a prayer in the morning. Whisper a prayer in the morning. Whisper a prayer in the evening. Just keep your A prayer in the morning Whisper A prayer in the morning Whisper A prayer in the evening Just keep your heart in God answers prayer in the morning. God answers prayer in the morning. God answers prayer in the evening. Just keep your heart. God answers prayer in the morning. God answers prayer in the morning. God answers prayer in the evening. Just keep your heart. Just keep your heart in I greet you yet once again in the precious and beautiful name of Jesus Christ our Lord. So good to be back in this hour with you. We are so fortunate. You know, beloved, every time when I record a broadcast, I just realize how fortunate I am, how fortunate you are to be able to just share the Word of God with me, just to come into your home, just to come and thank Him for his goodness, His love, His mercy, and the fact that He is so good unto us. Nothing you and I have to do but has to believe and trust in Him. I hope that your weekend thus far has been good. On this day, we get the opportunity just to worship and praise this awesome and mighty God, whom the Bible teaches us that He's faithful. He listens to us. He, he knows about us. 
all that you and I have to do is just to come and, and bow before him and just come and give him glory and honor. Just come and say, Lord, we love you so much. Because there is no other than you. I wonder if you and I can just for a moment become quiet and before we continue, listen to a song that I want to minister that is very much applicable on what I want to talk to you about today. Ever felt with times that we pray and it's as if it hits the roof, the ceiling and nothing comes from it. I want you to listen to this beautiful song and in the chorus part you're welcome to join me. I will have the words displayed so that it's easy for you to follow. come and encourage you with this. The songwriter says, Pray when the storm comes, gather on your head, hide in the light from Faith, 
our trust is in you, Lord. Will you be blessed and honored and glorified as you have already been through our worshiping songs, Lord? Listen to our cry, to the requests of our heart, granting us according to your will, whatever we ask. I'll be ready to come and listen to your word. Come and bless it, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just keep on praying till light breaks through. Beloved, I've already greeted you and I want you to open your Bibles, please, today. With me at first John chapter 5 first John chapter 5 and as you have noticed with already the start of this broadcast my topic for today is prayer is the key to heaven but faith unlocks the door prayer is the key to heaven but faith unlocks the door. Would you care to read with me 1st John chapter 5 and I will be reading verse 13. I want to start with these things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God which represents all that Jesus Christ is and does so that you will know with settled and absolute knowledge that you already have eternal life. This is the remarkable degree of confidence which we as believers are entitled to. Have before him that if we ask anything according to his will, that is, consistent with his plan and purpose, he hears us. And if we know, verse 15, and if we know for a fact, as indeed we do, that he hears and listens to us in whatever we ask, we also know with settled and absolute knowledge that we have granted to us the requests which we have asked from him. May God come and bless his word, what we have just been reading now upon our hearts. Our title today, Prayer is the Key to Heaven, but Faith Unlocks the Door. You will recall just a couple of minutes back when I started, I said that Sometimes we feel when we are praying, it is as if it hits the roof and the ceiling. Nothing comes from it. We feel that we are asking in vain and nothing comes to it. Nothing happens. Some of us may right there where you are sitting now and listening to this sermon may say, yes, I'm praying for for two years or six months or I'm praying for 25 years or more about a certain matter and it is as if God does not want to grant me that request. What is important again for me today is to come to you and you know by now I will only come and deal with topics which I know that people struggle with. I know as a human we struggle to, to get to understand whether God really knows, hears and listens to me. Can you remember the message that I have sent out? He hears you. Just be patient. One could see this as sort of a follow-up on that. 
But I am focusing today specifically on prayer. And I just love the title. Prayer is the key to heaven, but faith unlocks the door. Can we please go back to 1 John and quickly just read again what John is writing to us. He says in verse 13, I want to start there again. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God. That name is Jesus. Whatever we ask in the name of Jesus. You see, we should never ever forget or lose the bigger picture or get our focus distracted in not understanding properly. He says, these things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, which represents all that Jesus Christ is and does. So that you will know, and now the Amplified elaborates, and I love this, with settled and absolute knowledge that you already have eternal life. That is what we have. We know that. It's a settled knowledge, and we absolutely know that we know that we know we've got that eternal life. Let me just throw in here, of course, if we have been born again, if we are a true believer and we believe in Jesus Christ and we serve God with all of our hearts and on a daily basis, we live that. It should become a lifestyle, being a child of God. Verse 14, John says, this is the remarkable degree of confidence which we as believers are entitled to. Have before him that if we ask anything according to his will, and that there is the catching point. If we ask according to his will. Now before I continue, let me just elaborate on that. God has a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us. And if they are in need, we are in need of something, we should understand that we should always ask whatever it is according to his will. The most beautiful prayer ever given was introduced by our Lord Jesus Christ when his disciples asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, Jesus started. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debtors as we forgive our debtors or debt who trespassed against us. And let us not enter into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. And Jesus closed it with Amen. The perfect prayer ever. Now, what is important is that you and I will, when we pray, we've got to understand we have to pray according to God's will. In the Gospels, Jesus referred to the Pharisees when he said he was addressing bystanders and he said, don't pray and let your prayer be a lot of words, repeating a lot of things like the Pharisees were doing. Okay? Standing on the corner of the street, Jesus said, and for everybody to hear when they pray and to make an impression. God is not interested in a prayer that should impress. Sometimes we try to use big words, huge words, describing words, and thinking that we will get God's attention through and by that more. No. Simple prayer. You remember the other person who also, the sinner who was praying and the tax collector and they in the corner, he says, forgive me, Lord, 
for I am a sinner. And Jesus acknowledged that prayer more than those of the Pharisees. Yes, it is true, and I will agree with that. I know people today, when they open their mouths and they start to pray, they color in the most beautiful picture. You can see what they are praying. They are blessed with that. But you and I do not have to copycat that. You and I do not have to, to try and impress and do what others are doing. God just needs you to talk to Him. And He needs you to ask things that you need. He needs you to ask that. Because He says we've got to remind Him on His promises. But in a simple way, just you. Not someone else's prayer. Your prayer. And remember the title says, Prayer is the key to heaven, but faith unlocks the door. Now listen to this. He says, Have before him that if we ask anything according to his will, that is consistent with his plan and purpose. You remember I refer to that. He hears us. And if we know for a fact, as indeed we do, that he hears and listens to us, in whatever we ask, we also know with settled and absolute knowledge that we have granted to us the requests which we have asked from Him. That is, if you and I understand God's will, the purpose and the plan for us. So, Faith is not someone coming to tell you and say, listen, if you want that Ferrari standing there on the side of the road, bend down, kiss its, uh, the, the wheels, the tires, and claim it and pray and say, Lord, thank you, I claim this Ferrari to be mine. And perhaps you might have a giggle now and laugh about this. I'm serious. It's funny what people will do to get the attention of people. It's funny how people will come and deliberately just deceive people by telling them what they have to do when they pray. The Word of God is specific. And, and, and I'm here today to come and tell you again. For many years I've heard a lot of things. For many years I've experienced a lot of things. Especially when it comes to prayer, when it comes to faith, name it and claim it. All that type of stuff. For years, I came through these things. I've heard a lot of things. And today there are people struggling to come back to hold on to that faith once they had, because they have been deceived. I'm not here today to deceive you. Your prayer should be directed according to God's will. That's it. We cannot pray and ask the Lord for things that he know you and I cannot be responsible for or take responsibility for. Dad, I just want to ask you a question. Will you really give your son at the age of 12 or nine years of age, younger, a little bit older, will you give him a rifle if he asks you for one? Bullets and say, just, ah, go shoot him, go play. Really? Why won't you give it, Dad? Because you know it's dangerous. You know that he's not responsible enough to take care of that weapon. It's the same when we have to pray and ask the Lord for certain things. Sometimes we ask things and God knows we will not be responsible. I've learned how many people I've known to learn and, 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 and they ask, Lord, I want a ministry like that person. I want a ministry like this person. I would like to have that and this. But they had had the responsibility to go along. And that, that's part of character. And I'm not here today to talk about character. I'm talking to you about prayer. Prayer according to God's will. He knows your every thought, your every way of thinking. Long even before, Psalm 139 says, long even before we have formed words on our lips, he knows exactly what's in our hearts and what it is that we will ask. Because he knows everything. But what is important for me today is that you and I will understand. Now turn with me quickly to Matthew chapter 21, 
Matthew chapter 21. And I want you to listen to what the Word of God says. And again, I can only give you what I know what the Word says. Amen? I can only teach you from what I know and that which I believe. Matthew 21 verse 21 and 22 says the following. Jesus replied to them, I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, if you have faith, personal trust and confidence in me, and do not doubt or allow yourself to be drawn in two directions, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, it will happen if God wills it. And whatever you ask for in prayer, believing you will receive. Now again, let me just tell you here again today. When Jesus refers to this mountain, he's talking about circumstances, issues, things that you and I will go through, that we normally seem to be so big, we don't know how we will be able to handle it. How will we get through? If we understand how Jesus spoke and the words that he used for that time and how he addressed the crowd, he, he was referring to certain things that they knew, they understood it. For you and me today, we need to understand what Jesus meant by that. But he says, you should believe. You should have faith. You should have personal trust and confidence in him. You see, this is where many people fall off the bus, if I may use that expression. We are asking things, but we do not have the slightest idea of the consequences to follow or to go along with that. So, if we say prayer is the key to heaven, but faith unlocks the door, it simply means that whenever you will render a prayer, you and I should have personal trust and confidence in Christ that he will do it. Does it sound familiar? The following, we so many times give the Lord something to do and we say, Lord, we place it in your hands and we leave it there. And then all of a sudden we just turn around. If it's a day or two days later and nothing happens, oh no, Lord, you're not going to do this and, and let me handle it again because you are far too slow. There's an expression that I've heard once. God is mighty slow, but never too late. You remember Lazarus when he passed on? What did Martha say? Lord, you are four days late. No, Jesus is never late. He's always on time. It's us. Because of our personalities and the way that we have been put together and we grew up, that, that causes us to be so impatient. We ask today and we want to say, Lord, I wanted it yesterday. Does it sound familiar? I'm trying to use relevant examples so that you can stay with me and understand this word today. God does answer prayer. He does. And I want you to still keep on believing that. Even though you may go through a difficult time, even though things may seem that it, it's not going to work out, it will. You've got to have that. And whenever you ask for, and whatever you ask for, I'll repeat, and whatever you ask for, in prayer, believing, you will receive. We already read, according to God's will. Lord, I want a million rand. Why? To say you've got a million? To go and buy more expensive earthly things? 
to say and to be able to keep up with the Joneses? Come on, beloved. Whom are we fooling? We are pretending. And I'm here today to come and encourage you. Keep on praying till light breaks through. The Lord will answer. He will answer you. Do you hear me? God is faithful. He will do it. Shall we continue quickly to Mark chapter 6, please? Just turn with me to Mark chapter 6 and, and, and listen to what the Word of God says. Mark chapter 6. Oh, I just love the Word. Verses 5 and 6 says the following. Jesus was teaching at, uh, at Nazareth. And in verse 5 he says, And he could not do a miracle there at all. This is Jesus in his hometown because of their unbelief. You see, and this is where I still differ with, with the, the modern preacher today. I still trust God. I believe God. I stand upon his word. I believe in miracles. Not the way people try to perform miracles and what they are doing to the display of everybody. And people are deceived through and by that. And he could not do a miracle there at all because of their unbelief, except that he laid hands on a few sick people and healed them. He wondered at their unbelief. And he was going around in the villages teaching. Jesus was wondering about that, pondering on that. Coming from Nazareth, I'm a native of Nazareth. Come on. And they didn't believe. You see, beloved, that's why I am also not that naive today to think everybody listening to this word will take it or will believe it. What's to say believe in Christ? But you see, that's not for me to decide. That's not for me to judge or whatever. I'm here to simply come and tell you prayer is the key to heaven but faith unlocks the door. I'm still here today to come and tell you, to come and encourage you, to say to you, don't stop praying. Ask God according to his will in your life, his plan, his purpose. And he will answer us. He will hear us. Hannah, when she went to the temple and she prayed, to become with child, God heard her prayer. And she brought Samuel into life. Lazarus, Jesus prayed. He called him, come out. The power, the power of words, the power of faith, the power of prayer. Are we there? I feel so compelled just to, to say to you again today, if the church can only but turn back, if you and I as beloved, as children of God, I have said it about a week ago to the congregation, I said to them, where is that enthusiasm the day when Jesus allowed us to be born again and, and we repent and we started a new life in him. We just wanted to change everybody. We wanted to paint the city and the town red, convert everybody that comes our way. And today, we hardly show that enthusiasm anymore. We hardly get excited when we went and go into the place of worship and we worship God. We don't get excited anymore. What happened, friend? Beloved, what happened? I'm asking you. Why is it that you are not that happy anymore? Is it because you took a step back? Is it perhaps because you feel that things are so upside down and hectic and it's more chaos than everything else. God doesn't listen and he won't listen. And why should I continue? I'm here today to come and tell you. Keep on praying. Do you hear me? Just keep on praying Till the light breaks the room Oh, oh, oh. 
just keep on praying till light breaks through. The Lord will answer. He will answer you. Why? Because he keeps his promises. Shall we turn to James chapter 1, please? James chapter 1, and, and, and listen to what the Word of God says. James chapter 1. I want to read to you the following verses so that we can get a clearer picture again of what the Word of God says. James chapter 1, and I will be reading verses 5 to 8. Listen to this. If any of you lacks wisdom to guide him through a decision or circumstance, he is to ask of our benevolent God. Do you hear me? Do you want wisdom? Do you want knowledge? Insight? You've got to ask it from God. How do we ask it? Through prayer. Who gives to everyone generously and without rebuke or blame. And it will be given to him. It will. It will. Do you hear me? But. Here's the but. But he must ask for wisdom in faith. Without doubting God's willingness to help. For the one who doubts is like a billowing surge of the sea that is blown about and tossed by the wind. For such a person ought not to think or expect that he will receive anything at all from the Lord. Being a double-minded man, unstable and restless in all his ways, in everything he thinks, feels, or decides. If you and I are pondering on two thoughts, if we are heading for that way and this way, thinking of two things, it's not going to happen. When we ask, when we go down in prayer and we talk to the Lord, when we ask, we must believe, we must have faith in Him that He will bring it to pass. Let me read to you again for verse 7. For such a person ought not to think or expect that he will receive anything at all from the Lord. Which person? Verse 6. The person who doubts. The person who is blown about and tossed by the wind. Such a person should not. Which person? The person that has a double mind. Unstable and restless in all his ways. In everything. He thinks, he feels, he decides. Are you? Are you restless? Are you unstable in your ways? Are you unstable in what you think, what you feel, what you decide? Or are you there when you ask? You believe. Lord, I know. I simply just know that I know that I know. You're going to come through. And, and, and I'm not going to doubt your word. I know your promises are true, Lord. I know that. And I'm going to stick to that. Go with me now to James chapter 5. Verses 14 and 15. And listen to what the word of God says. If anyone among you, is anyone among you sick? He must call for the elders, the spiritual leaders of the church. And they are to pray over him. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith will restore the one who is sick. And the Lord will raise him up and if he has committed sins he will be forgiven prayer is the key to heaven but faith unlocks the door beloved keep on praying 
Keep on reminding God on his promises. Don't let go. Don't falter in this. Don't deviate from what you've learned and what you've experienced. God is faithful and just and he will listen to our cry. He takes notice of our prayers. He does. Do you hear me? Yeah, but Andre, it feels so long. <laughs> I know there, there are many cases that I can share with you instances where God just simply stepped in and he just came through miraculously. He did things that was so remarkable. Many, numerous ones. I'm not even going to mention it because you might just feel discouraged through and by that. But I know it's true. And I know that I've got family who can share this. Knowing that we serve a faithful God. A God Prior to the sermon, you were invited and, and I sang a chorus. And it says, I Father, 
You are the only one who is present right now in the very room or in the place, Lord, that everybody who listened to this sermon are now. I know one thing for certain. And that is that your word says we don't have because we don't ask. And when we ask, we ask so that we can spend it in our lust. Instead of asking you according to your will. Lord, I am bringing every person, everyone who listened, asking you today, whatever it may be, Lord, that they are praying about for so long. You today will give them that assurance. You are there through it all. Oh Lord, let them keep on asking, let them keep on praying till light breaks through. Because you are faithful and you will do it. Give us the strength and thank you. We may come and ask this now in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. May God just bless his word upon our hearts. And I want to encourage you in closing by saying again, prayer is the key to heaven, but faith unlocks the door. Shall we receive the blessing of the Lord? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion with the Holy Spirit be, beloved, and stay and remain with each and every one of us until Jesus comes again. And to that we can say, Amen. Shalom. Be blessed. Stay blessed. And Maranatha.